So good afternoon, everyone again. And uh, my name is Gaha uh, Shengelia. So today's, uh, my moderated topic will be uh, future of democracy and uh, challenges confronting democracy today. I do have prepared some notes for you, uh, for discussions. And now we can open a floor. In evaluating the challenges confronting democracy today, I am compelled to recall the empirical data, which actually was complied by the Freedom House. Freedom in the World 2018, the title Democracy in Crisis, gives a clear indication that qualitative improvement in democratic performance across the world is falling and democracy is backsliding. We have known this for over a decade now, and data shows that guarantees of free and fair elections, the rights of minorities, freedom and press, and the rule of law come under serious attack around the world. More precise, 17 one countries show net declines in political rights and civil liberties. Only 35 have gains. Overall, during the past 12 years, since 2006, 113 countries show net decline, and only 62 shows a net improvement. This is Freedom of the World 2018 quote. Granted this dire situation, I would like to address several outstanding topics that shed a light on the most serious challenges facing democracies today. Challenges within democratic states and challenges from the totalitarian regimes. The challenges within democratic states, states and nations. Here we have two negative trends. One associated with, with rise of populism and second visible backslide of democracy in well-established republics. Various regional challenges such as migration crisis and the rise of terrorist acts in Europe seem to have fooled the rise of xenophobic far right, far left parties across Europe, as well as the entire globe for the last couple of years. In Europe, we have had the most dramatic past two years, election years, all watching intensely how the elections would unfold in France. Germany, Netherlands, and Austria, and Italy. I forgot Italy, but fine. <laughs> in France, for the first time, a far-right national front, as we all know already, defeated our political rivals, giving them platform, pledged suspicion of immigration, and challenging France's European Union membership. This was the closest a far-right party came to welding a power in well-established democracy. We have also seen the rise of Eurosceptic Aero and far-right party in Germany. All we know, alternative for Germany, entered German legislation for the first time since 1945. Similarly, political parties structure change in Austria and in the Netherlands. As far as for the first time, anti-Islamic and xenophobic parties gained major seats in their respective legislatures. In several Eastern European countries, for instance, Hungary and Poland, and the Western Balkans, for example, in Macedonia, leaders have embarked on a populist ladder, oppressing media and civil societies, and challenging the controlling the judiciary in several branches of the clear European values, as spelled out in Article 2 of the Treaty of the European Union. Serious challenges are looming for the well-established democracies, as we are, as well, Turkey or Philippines, as they struggle to overcome rising transboundary or internal security challenges at the expense of oppressing freedom and liberty at home. <coughs> These are our worrying trends and ones we need an explanation. So far, there have been two compelling theories. What try to explain 
the rise of populism. First one, the economic inequality thesis. With perspective emphasis that populist movements and leaders have capitalized on the trend of rising income and wealth in inequality. With rising economic insecurity and social deprivation, among the left behind full popular resentment to the traditional political elites. Hence, those who fell left behind are easily susceptible and when anti-establishment and xenophobic populist movements as they manage to blame them for depriving us. While war certainly needs to be greater in places put on shrinking the inequality in the world, the democratic societies must also renegotiate educational efforts to deny the populist they support base that are gaining strength on the wrong basis. Populists will end can only widen the existing income inequality gap. Therefore, we must watch out not to let them cause the same illness which they claim they want to cure. Second major theory, which attempts to explain the current global rise of populism as a cultural backlash thesis. This thesis suggests that populist words can be explained as a reaction against progressive cultural change. According to this theory, while Western countries are experiencing a shift towards materialistic values, cosmopolitanism, multiculturalism, green movements, gender and human rights in general, however, this shift has also encountered a counter-revolutionary retro backlash. Among the older generation who actively reject these progressive values and move and support populist voters who attack modern value systems. In, the, uh, in, the, in this regard, I again see the role for education in this widest respect. We must continue education in schools, in universities, and from with TV screens of better openness and inclusiveness and show that value systems, be modern or traditional, are better protected in the democracy than in any other forms of governance known to humankind. Again, we must deny the flourishing grounds of populism since we know that we cure what they offer can only exacerbate those problems populists claim to fix. Over the last couple of years, we have also seen an unprecedented rise of state-sponsored propaganda against Western values of democracy. Liberalism, multiculturalism, tolerance, and civil liberties. These totalitarian regimes see democracy as a threat to their regimes. They fear the force of example that could cause tectonic changes in their own population and continue to oppress openness on the one hand, and undermine via negative propaganda the reputation of democratic governance. The methods used that way reach is indeed a cause of concern. For the first time, the Russian-sponsored propaganda has intervened openly in the US and many European countries. We use technologies and we pips money to finance such activities. The outcome of such practices, if unchecked, could be dire. It could lead towards silent deterioration of trust and belief in the democracy and democratic governance, while totalitarian regimes continue to flourish and find even more efficient national solutions to stay in power. Vladimir Putin's recent victory in the presidential election is the perfect illustration of that trend. We must especially watch out for the domination of media outlets and pre preclude them from becoming propaganda mouthpieces. In the end, I would like to recall the word of famous American philosopher and educator reformer John Dewey, who said, democracy has to be born a new every generation, and education is it a midwife. Mm -hmm. I believe, given the growing challenges that democracy has faced in this last decade, it, it is time to give birth to a new generation of liberal thinkers who can deliver us from populist 
irrationality and inevitability they, they miss. Certainly, education is the medium that is best suited to facilitate this result. Thank you very much for your attention.